Thank you, Charles and Pamela. Uh, thank you, Martin. Great, very interesting presentation. Uh, my name is Pez Zarathion, and I'm the lead engineer for Team XC, which is uh, JPL's collaborative design team for CubeSats, NanoSats, and SmallSats. Uh, before I tell you about Team XC, I'd like to take a few moments and talk about Team X and the history of collaborative design at JPL. And uh, uh, Team X is essentially the concurrent engineering team at JPL for uh, rapid design and analysis of uh, our space mission concepts for proposal support. Um, so back in 1995, what happened was that uh, the formation office at JPL uh, started recognizing that there's huge potential in, oops, No worries. All right, we're back on. Um, so yes, back in 1995, as I was saying, uh, the formulation office at JPL started recognizing uh, the huge potential of collaborative uh, design and sort of concurrent engineering sessions over traditional um, engineering methods. Uh, as you can imagine, essentially what they were doing back in the days was for every proposal concept or idea that they were uh, considering, they would gather around a, a number of experts with uh, lead system engineers and a, and a mission manager. And they would uh, get together and start considering uh, several options and, and going through that sort of a serial process of getting the team together, looking at the subsystem designs, looking at the system design, looking at the cost, and sort of doing those loopbacks until uh, they converged at a solution. And uh, essentially what was realized at that time was that if you were able to get all of your experts under one roof, uh, your system engineer, your subsystem experts, um, all in, 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 uh, uh, together in, in a collaborative design session, you will be able to converge at a uh, much more feasible option uh, pretty quickly and uh, arrive at a very um, consistent uh, concept, uh, which is uh, uh, which basically yields a, a lot less error than uh, than if you were to do it using these traditional engineering methods, uh, getting people together once a week and sending them off to work in their cubicles. So that's essentially uh, how Team X operates, getting the experts all together uh, to do a number of study sessions. And uh, Team XC is, is sort of a sister team of, uh, of Team X for CubeSats. Um, so I think it's been mentioned a number of times today, the Inspire mission uh, sort of uh, opened the door to, um, um, for CubeSats to in a planetary flight. And um, there are essentially two, three U CubeSats, uh, according to Duncan's radios, flying on these things to um, talk back to Earth using the X-Bank uh, link and also uh, the spacecraft server, as I mentioned, cross-linking, uh, doing that demonstration. Um, so it was noticed that there's an increasing demand for these um, sort of a rapid uh, CubeSat, NanoSat concept design generation, uh, just like it was for, for general missions that JPL usually handles. And uh, JPL would be noticing that, um, that this is sort of a, a place where we can leverage some of these low-cost architectures for our exploration. And uh, to help sort of meet the demand that's been uh, evident recently, we've created Team XC uh, to have these fast turnaround, approximately two to four week study sessions uh, where we get together with the experts, we look at the concepts, and we determine the feasibility or help, help with the trade space exploration. And I'll talk a little bit more about the details of what we do and the products that we offer to our customer team, uh, which would be this, essentially the principal investigators uh, who have any, any sort of a science concept or technology demonstration and bring that uh, to us. Um, so we're adaptable to a variety of uh, form factors. We're not form factor limited. Uh, we're called Team XC for CubeSats, but we really handle small sats and general nanosats. Um, we really consider the light, light, lightweight and low cost uh, designs um, and uh, provide the, the customer with uh, proposal ready products so they can sort of walk away and write their proposals uh, with uh, graphs and the data that we generate for them. Uh, process is pretty repeatable. We have a fixed team and we bring in the expertise as needed. And we're expecting about tens of customers uh, per year. Uh, starting in March, we started doing our study sessions. And I'll tell you a little bit about the work that we've been doing. So as far as the CubeSats and um, NanoSats, just to tell you the, the domain where we work in, uh, as I mentioned, we're not limited by form factor and we're not limited by destination. So we're really looking at a lot of concepts that are you know, for elementary CubeSats and small sats, not necessarily only earth orbiting. Um, the concept maturity level, that's sort of a measure that we have for how, how mature a concept is. The CMO level that we're looking at is 2 to 5, which is uh, essentially starting from feasibility studies all the way through uh, trade space uh, exploration, picking a point design, and uh, fleshing out the design, and then looking at the concept and, and basically doing a review for uh, the proposals. 
Um, and uh, we also uh, sort of propose this uh, or offer this option of uh, including some of the people who are in the studies in the proposal team so they can help the customer team write their proposals and, and get that through. Um, so these are some of the, study, the, the options that um, or the flavors of studies that I was telling you about. Essentially the feasibility study is sort of aimed at the question of can I fit my CubeSat, uh, can I fit my mission into a CubeSat? Essentially the, the capability that I'm looking at is that feasible with current technology. And if not, why not? What are the tall temples? Uh, uh, trade space exploration um, is essentially looking at some of these trades and the sensitivities in the design. Um, point design is fleshing out the design and the concept review is sort of a NASA-like review uh, that we have internally for our team to determine the, sort of the Achilles heel of the, of the proposal or the concept. Um, so tell you a little bit more uh, about each one of these flavors of studies that we have. Uh, like, like I mentioned, the feasibility option is essentially saying, asking the question of, can I do a mission with a CubeSat? Or the reverse question can be asked that, if I were to go into a particular destination, let's say going to Europa, what can I do with a CubeSat? If I were to take a CubeSat with me and just dump it into some kind of an orbit or do a flyby, what would I be able to um, achieve? And uh, the products that we provide to the customer, there is essentially the high level, so the feasibility for the, for the concept and recommendations uh, to, uh, to ensure that the design is feasible. And then also um, provide some insights into the constraints and the, and the drivers and trade-offs for the, for the concept that we're looking at. The trade space exploration option of the, this flavor of study is usually focused on what are the architecture options and uh, looking at major drivers and sensitivities. And essentially what the customer walks away with is um, these trade representations, which includes sort of, um, for example, the science value versus cost uh, kind of a curve, where we help the customer identify what is the threshold, um, sort of lower and upper bound of the science that they're looking at, and how does that change as a function of their budget. And uh, also providing the recommendations to the customer team as far as what is the optical, optimal design or, or essentially the design that gets you the most bang for your buck uh, so that they can come back to us for a, a point design uh, study. Um, now this is my favorite part of the uh, kind of a study where we actually get to flesh out the, the design and provide the customer with the master equipment list and the power, power modes. Um, we put together a CAD model for the customer. Uh, provide orbit and trajectory design, concepts of operations, power modes. Uh, we have an internal, internally developed cost model uh, that we use to come up with a cost estimate for the mission. And uh, we also look at things like uh, schedule uh, using some of the past missions that we've done and some of the experience that we've gotten from university partners. Uh, we also establish um, relationships at this point between university partners and, um, and uh, the concept that the customer might have in mind so that if they wanted to develop building the spacecraft, uh, they can uh, work with the university uh, from the proposal phase to get them on board. And uh, there are other options um, such as looking at, for example, within the complexities of the software and um, providing animations for the customer to be able to go forward and sell that concept. Uh, one, of, uh, one of the interesting products that we offer is a 3D printed model of the, of the spacecraft. So with these tra with, uh, point design studies, the customer can actually walk away with a 3D rotatable model of the spacecraft that they can show around, but then they can actually uh, pay a little bit extra money to get the model printed out. What you're looking at the, the lower left-hand side is a 3D printed model of the, the, the CAD design that you see on the right-hand side. And the customer really liked this design, uh, this, uh, this printout, because they could actually take it to the review session and take it apart and show the pieces and parts of the, of the spacecraft. And they said that they were, that was incredibly useful in their review process. Um, so the last flavor of uh, studies that we do is the, is the concept review, the proposal review that we do. And uh, essentially what we have is we, we bring in a few experts in each one of these areas and uh, keeping in mind uh, that they have flight experience and they have specifically CubeSat background. And we have them evaluate the, the concept of the proposal uh, in these areas, which is management, management schedule, uh, the flight system, details of the instrument, uh, looking at the operations, and also commenting on the cost of, uh, of the mission and, and basically trying to validate that cost. Um, and essentially, the products include um, uh, sort of a risk rating based on what we think the NASA reviewers are going to come back uh, with, with for the customer. And uh, sort, of, sort of major and minor weaknesses that the customer can address before they, uh, before they uh, uh, can go forward with the concept. 
this is a list of the team members. I won't go into the details of them, but I uh, wanted to thank Charles Norton and Stephen Susick for all the help that they've provided to uh, uh, me with uh, setting up the team. Uh, we also take advantage of, uh, of um, hiring interns and establishing the relationship with universities to uh, get people with flight experience on the latest CubeSat missions to come to JPL, both learn how we do things and you know, help our experts understand the way that the way of the CubeSats and the CubeSat missions that are done at the university level so they can kind of bring that uh, latest information regarding these missions to our center. Um, we've done about eight studies so far since March of this year, uh, so that averages about uh, a study a month. And uh, like I mentioned, we look at uh, several different destinations and different form factors. Uh, we focused this summer on developing the design models that we needed for, uh, for the study sessions and we're currently working on integrating these models and also working on a database of CubeSat uh, components that we get to pull from. So if you have any components that you'd like to include in this database, uh, feel free to contact me or maybe we can have, uh, have a quick chat after this uh, talk uh, so we can make sure we include your hardware in there and take advantage of those uh, uh, availabilities in the, the sessions. Uh, let's see. So as I mentioned, the strengthening of relationships with universities and creating those, uh, bringing the summer interns in and working on proposals with uh, principal investigators at universities, um, 10 few conferences and creating these connections between Team XC and the industry and other NASA centers, and uh, collaborating, with the, collaborating with the industry to understand better what are the technologies that are on their, on their product line and what it is that they're hoping to provide in the next few years so that we can make sure to uh, let the customers know about the t options that are available to them and uh, the, th the technologies that are going to be available in a few years rather than what's on the market right now. And also internally working at JPL with the Integrated CubeSat Development Lab, which is a lab that JPL is developing for building actual developing CubeSat uh, spacecrafts and uh, also working with our model-based system engineering effort for integration of our design models uh, for passing parameters around and creating really flexible and, uh, and capable models. There's a couple of pictures of our team. Uh, you can see that we have a sort of a flight operations like room uh, with a number of computers. They're, they have name tags on top of them uh, for every subsystem. Uh, each subsystem expert sits at the computers. Uh, they have the design models running uh, that are integrated. They talk to each other, pass parameters, the design parameters back and forth. And they can essentially uh, pull together the design very quickly. And you'd be surprised how much you can get done with a couple of two, three uh, minute sessions. Um, and basically be able to pull together at least the feasibility, if not the complete point design of the spacecraft within a couple of seconds. Um, thank you. If you have any questions, I'll uh, take them now. Oh, thanks. Thanks very much. Oh, Dan, did you have a question? Yep, I see him. Pamela, go ahead. Okay, so I, would you talk a little bit more about the Integrated CubeSat um, Development Laboratory and where you are with that? Actually, I'm not a part of that. I'm sort of collaborating with those guys to better understand what it is that they are doing. I think Charles can comment better on, on the status of that work. Yes, so um, yeah, we're in the process right now of developing a laboratory which would be dedicated to development of small spacecraft uh, at JPL. Um, it's always hard to find lab space. I'm sure it's not a new issue. <laughs> so that's really what the focus is, to try to have a, a dedicated location. But in terms of what uh, Pez has mentioned, the integration with Team XC, I think it's very exciting because I think when you look at the components and the technologies that go into these systems, many of them are new and they're evolving and they have to be evaluated. And you have to understand whether or not they meet the performance characteristics before you want to incorporate them into your design study. So I think this interplay between the laboratory development and assessment of components, their integration into working systems that will go to flight, and the, how that feeds into the design process is really something new that, that PEZ is bringing forward within this group, and I think will be an important capability as you look towards design. Yeah, actually, I'm also interested in how you're sort of incorporating the Class D development mission assurance issues. Mm -hmm. into the into the your efforts with Team XC, which is of course a big challenge. Sure, there's a lot of work that's being done uh, on that, and uh, with uh, the people who are actually working on flight projects at JPL, uh, obviously we sort of have these invisible boundaries between formulation and, and implementation. But essentially, the system engineers and project managers who are working on our flight projects, our uh, CubeSat based, are working through with quality assurance and with uh, sort of the higher level. Of, the, of, our, of our management uh, to identify pathways where we can reduce the cost of those processes and really appropriately look at 
the effort that's needed um, uh, for the, for these CubeSat type missions, rather than you know I, I just adapting what's there for for these long, you know the type of missions GPL has been doing for the past years. Um, so they are there. There are efforts that are being uh, worked out as far as the documentation for the and the literature that's being put together that's CubeSat specific, rather than um, than uh, what's being used for our flagship missions. Dan Lim have a question? Yeah. Hi, uh, Dan Lim with Tricep. Uh, so uh, as you guys are building more complex uh, proposals and helping your PIs uh, build the proposals up to NASA, uh, I know uh, some of the requirements are, you know, what is the cost of launch, what is the cost of uh, uh, um, the total mission life cycle. Is that also included within your, uh, in your assessments? How do you assess what the launch costs are? How do you assess what the launch, uh, uh, launch uh, uh, opportunities are in the future, and how much uh, collaboration are you doing with the industry to find out what, what those price points are and what the launch opportunities are? Definitely. So um, one of the things that we've been doing is uh, we actually have a dedicated uh, system engineer who's in charge of getting that information from the industry for us. Uh, for example, we um, on the CubeSat launch initiative side, we talk to Garrett Scrobot all the time to uh, understand some of the opportunities that are coming up and help our customers baseline to, to specific launch opportunities. Uh, so, for example, if a customer wants to get into a sensing orbit, let's say for an Earth orbiting mission, uh, we could pick up the phone and call Garrett and say, hey, how many opportunities are coming up in 2016? If he knows, he'll let us know. Uh, but then again, we're also talking to SpaceX and, and, um, and Orbitals and, and several other vendors to talk about some of the opportunities that they might be able to offer us with. And they provide some cost estimates as far as what does it cost to launch a, a single CubeSat or a number of them or uh, what would be the delta cost and delta effort if you or CubeSat had a propulsion system on board uh, and all those other options. So we kind of have that uh, integrated in a model that we use to um, help the customer identify the change in the complexity of the concept and also the delta cost uh, and basically the options that are available uh, to them for, for launching. We really do try to um, provide the customer with an end-to-end -end architecture rather than just a bus design, right? So we identify the launch, uh, um, launch capabilities and services that are available to them. Uh, we identify the orbit and we actually do the trajectory work. Martin has helped us uh, a lot with that and, and some of the concepts that we've looked at. And then also look at the operations phase of the mission and how we can try to reduce cost and complexity of that chasing. So who, who are your customers? Strictly NASA or is this open to the public? Or? Uh, we've had internal customers mostly. We've had a few customers from universities. Uh, some of the PIs have reached out to us and they've had uh, several pots of funding from headquarters or other, other sources that they wanted to um, essentially bring in and do these concept studies with us. It's a great opportunity for them because they get to in, engage their students into real design work and it's a great opportunity for us because we get to work with universities and sort of take advantage of that mentality of, of getting the work done and learning how um, sort of the, the, the kind of um, expertise that they bring and as far as designing CubeSats and doing the work a lot simpler and, and, and it's, it's certainly a completely different mentality, right, that, that we're trying to catch up on. So we could get that from the university side very nicely. Quick, because we're running over, Pamela. Oh, are we late? No, we're on Can time. I ask it? Great, okay. Five minutes late. So. What, what is your, you know, what kind of interaction, could you describe a little bit more of the kind of relationships you have with universities? Sure, so we have a few university partners that, uh, for example, we have a great connection with Jordi at uh, Cal Poly Slow and with uh, your USC institution, uh, the uh, Information Sciences Institute. So we know those guys and a few others that we talk to as far as developing the CubeSat. So when we know that we have a customer with a specific need for their CubeSats or small sats that a university would be best suitable for, we create that connection between the customer and the university early on from a design phase. So I'll give you an example. For example, USC is an expert in deployables. They've done the half meter, uh, the deployable antenna that, they, that they've uh, flown. Um, so anytime we have a customer who's interested in deployable antennas or large deployable structures, we put them in touch with USC and we you know, create that connection between the two of them. And if you can have the university engage in the study, we try to do that, but usually that connection happens after the study between the customer and the, and the university team. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much. <laughs>